In this video, we are going to cover section 4.1, the description of motion, and section 4.2, simple examples of displacement fields. An object is described mathematically by the set of vectors that represent its material points. The picture in front of you shows an object embedded in R3 and every point on the object is represented by a vector X and the capital X has components X1, X2 and X3 and the set of points are donated omega naught. And this is called a configuration of the object. As the object deforms, the position of its point changes and the new position is usually denoted by the vector small x, which has components x1, x2 and x3 and the deformed configuration is usually termed omega. And there's a mapping function between omega naught and omega so that it shows where every point in the reference configuration, what is its position in the deformed configuration. And this mapping function is f it maps vectors in omega naught to vectors in omega. There are certain restrictions on the possible forms of this mapping function. First, this mapping function has to be bijective because as the object deforms, physically, the material points in the reference configuration have to match the material points in the deformed configuration. And so F has to be bijective. Also, we usually are concerned with physical phenomenon that ensures F is continuous. F is continuous physically means that there are no cracks that form into the object as it deforms. Also, F is smooth or differentiable, which allows me to measure or to calculate what we call strain. And we're going to explain this further when we talk about the measures of strain. The displacement function is equal to the difference in the position functions. So u of x, the displacement of every point x, is equal to the new position small x minus the original position capital X, which is equal to f of x minus x. In the following section, we're going to cover some simple examples of deformation. The first example is a rigid body displacement. A rigid body displacement is represented by a constant displacement vector at every point. So the new position x is equal to the old position plus a constant c and c is a vector in R3. The displacement function u is equal to the new position x minus the old position capital X. x minus capital X is equal to c which is the constant vector of displacement c in R3. In the course website, you are going to find a tool in which you can specify the three components of the vector C and the size of the box and the tool will draw the box and the displaced box after the rigid body displacement. The next simple example of deformation is termed rigid body rotation. A rigid body rotation is represented by a rotation matrix Q that's a three by three rotation matrix. The new position X is equal to the rotation matrix multiplied by the original position capital X. The displacement function u, u is equal to the new position small x minus the original position capital X. The small x is equal to qx, so q is a matrix, x is a vector, minus x. And so I can take this x as a common factor here, and then I can multiply it by the matrix q minus i. So u is equal to q minus i multiplied by the vector x. On your website, you have a tool that you can specify three angles of rotation and the tool will draw a box with specific size and you can change the size of the box and then will overlap that box with the box after rotation. And notice that the order of rotation is important. If you rotate an object by theta x, then by theta y, and then by theta z, this is different from rotating first by theta z, then by theta y, then by theta x, where theta x is a rotation around x, theta y is a rotation around y, and theta z is a rotation around z. And the tool shows you the difference, and underneath each figure you'll find the order of rotation. The third simple example of displacement is called rigid body motion. A rigid body motion is a combination of both rigid body displacement and rigid body rotation. The new position X is equal to a rotation multiplied by the original position capital X plus the constant rigid body displacement vector C. 
the displacement function u is equal to the new position minus the old position x minus capital X small x is equal to qx plus c and so u is equal to q minus i capital X plus that constant displacement vector c. On your website there's a tool that draws a rigid body motion given theta x theta y theta z and given the components of the rigid body displacement the tool draws the original box and the box after rotation and rigid translation. In the three previous examples all the rotations were rigid which means that the object itself moved but there was no strain that the material points kept their distance with respect to each other. In this simple example, the object is allowed to extend or contract, to increase in length or decrease in length. This type is called uniform extension and contraction. It's characterized by three positive parameters, k1, k2, and k3, where the new position x1, x2, and x3 is equal to a multiplier, x1 is equal to a multiplier k1 by capital X1, x2 is equal to a multiplier k2 by capital x2 and small x3 is equal to a multiplier k3 by capital x3. You also have an example where you can play around with the values of kx, ky and kz and the tool shows you how this affects the increase or the decrease in the size of the box in the first, or second or third directions. Another type of deformation where the material points move with respect to each other is shear. And there are two types of shear. Simple shear and pure shear. In simple shear, the new position, small x1, is equal to the original position, capital X1, plus tan theta multiplied by x2. Small x2 is equal to capital X2, so no change in that. Small x3 stays as capital X3, so no change in that. In pure shear, x1 is equal to capital X1 plus 10 theta over 2 capital X2. Small x2 is equal to 10 theta over 2 x1 plus x2. And small x3 stays 1 multiplied by x capital X3. So let's see what the deformation shape looks like in case of simple shear and in case of pure shear. In simple shear, this is the angle theta that appears in the equation. And as you can see, the horizontal position has changed. And if, if we call this vertical distance a capital X2, then this change is equal to X2 tan theta. In a pure shear, we have here theta over 2 and theta over 2. And each point has changed its position horizontally by x2 tan theta over 2 and vertically by x1 tan theta over 2. Simple shear can be extended to shear angles x theta xy, theta xz and theta yz and uh, on the course website there's a tool that allows you to change these angles and visualize the effect on the deformation. As well in pure shear there's another tool that allows you to see the effect of changing three angles on the deformed shape of a box.